All right, Tale of Two Hides. This is a short account of my ongoing transition to a, a reality full of life, love, passion, health, community, growth, gratitude, and bees. It is my story of listening to and trusting my heart to lead me down the right path at the right time. It is a tale of two highs, as you can see. Why? I, I'll start off by answering this question first because it is a very important question for all of us to ask ourselves often. Specifically, the question is, why do I do what I do? Does what I do every day strengthen my body and my spirit, my community, the economy, and the environment? This is the environment I used to work in. Cold, noisy, windowless rooms full of filtered air, heartless machines, and overworked, unhealthy humans. <laughs> this inhumane environment is what you find in many mass production zones, whether it be agriculture, healthcare, and sometimes even beekeeping. This is the environment I work in and foster today, outside in the sunshine with thousands of beautiful women flitting about in gorgeous flora. <laughs> Forging bees, known as worker bees, are all female. I commonly re refer to them as my women, even though I'm not suffering from any delusions of actually owning them. My wife and I have spent the last five years retrofitting our third acre home and landscape into a beautiful, supportive, healthy, and inexpensive environment. Keeping bees was the next step for us. We currently grow about 75% of our produce and all of our honey. Along the way, I rediscovered my love of designing, creating, growing, and caring for things, plants, and animals. Nothing feeds my spirit and stomach better than gardening and keeping bees. Harvesting, processing, and bottling honey all by hand is icing on the cake for me. What is the next question? What was the next logical question to ask once I answered my why question? I knew that I would be in love with my women for the rest of my life, so I began reading all I could about the state of bees and the beekeeping industry. Along the way, I encountered a disturbing story that inspired me to find a better way to keep bees. I first heard about CCD, that colony collapse disorder, in 2007 when it was first made news in the mass media, but I hadn't yet made the connection to the beginnings of mass agriculture and mass commercialism in the 1950s. After further research, it was very clear what the causes are and were. Now for a bit of beekeeping history. The Langstroth hive was invented in the United States at the dawn of the second industrial revolution, and it enabled beekeepers to push honey production to levels never seen before. It also allowed beekeepers to harvest honey with less damage to the colonies. So it was a good thing in that respect. The Langstroth hive actually improved the bee situation by increasing their population until about 1950. However, the rise of the petrochemical <coughs> industry and its incursions into mass agriculture and beekeeping, along with the exploitation of the Langstroth hives of mobility, are two significant factors contributing to, to the decline of the honeybees' numbers since then. Now we have bee slums, where overcrowded communities of bees are trucked around the country to pollinate monocrops that are sprayed with all sorts of nasty stuff. Even after the bees are weakened by extensive travel, deficient diet, and over-harvesting of their food, honey, they are often fed high fructose corn syrup and other chemicals to strengthen them. Uh, let's see, the next question, how? How am I going to go about trying not only to stop the harm being done, but to improve the bees' lot in life? My solution had to improve my life, my community, the economy, and the environment, or at least show promise of doing so over the long term. So, introducing backyard beekeeping. Progressive beekeepers know that the solution starts with establishing thousands of distributed low-density hives and beekeepers in areas where bees have not been kept traditionally. Urban and suburban beekeepers are sharply on the rise today, as are the corresponding number of beekeepers. So then I asked myself, is Langstroth hive the right type of hive for backyard beekeeping? My research informed me that it was not the best fit for the current challenge that we face with the bees. Times have changed, and I feel strongly that it's time for beekeeping to change as well. Introducing the top bar hive. This design has been around for thousands of years. It is named so because of, instead of full wooden frames, only simple wooden top bars are used which bees can hang freeform comb on. There's a vertical version of a, a top bar hive called the Waray, 
I chose a horizontal layout because it saved me from lifting heavy boxes full of bees and honey. I chose to go with the Kenyan top bar hive. It has sloped sides instead of the vertical sides of the Tanzanian hive. As you can probably guess, the top bar hive design is found primarily in Africa, and the sloped sides of the Kenyan makes it less likely that bees will attach comb to the side of the hive. This makes it easy, easier to remove the bars with attached comb. And you guys can read the advantages at this point. Um, I'll read off the screen essentially, but there's quite a few advantages. Ergonomically, no heavy lifting. Uh, they're simple and sturdy, easy to make, easy to maintain, and they're flexible. Uh, I can hold many bees in them or two hives or, or whatever I want to. Um, more advantages. Uh, it's natural. There's no plastic used in these hives. Uh, it's all natural comb, like I said. There's no foundation like our Minecraft hive. It's, it tends to be healthier because bees build comb cells to what size they need to. In the wild, that's what they do. They make for healthier bees instead of forcing them to build them a certain size. Uh, they're colony friendly. All the hives have viewing windows, so quite often just to check a hive, I just go there, open the window, close it, I'm done. Uh, aesthetically pleasing, I think it looks much better, and it's very critter resistant because it's off the ground. Uh, raccoons and skunks love to get into hives traditionally, so this really helps. And that's the end. That's my website up top. I encourage you to visit the website and check it out. If you can't read the uh, bottom here, uh, it's, it says, I know things are tight, but I'm sure we can afford to keep more than one bee. <laughs> it shows a guy with his little smoker, a little bee box with one bee. <laughs>